morning, everyone. And welcome to Holy Rosary Church, Mary Mother of God Parish, as we gather together to celebrate the sacred mystery of our faith. Let us call to mind our own false feelings and sins and ask God for his gracious mercy through the intercession of Blessed Mother Mary and all the angels and saints as we may say the Confidior together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life, let us pray. Grant us, O Lord our God, that we who honor you with all of our mind and love everyone in truth of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated but healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter roots spring up and cause trouble, through which many may become defiled. The word of the Lord. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity toward those who fear him, and his justice toward children's children among those who keep his covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> well, happy first day of uh, February with 23 days, 20, no, 28 days. We have three left. And the uh, uh, Family Circus uh, cartoon has a little boy showing the calendar to his brother, and he says, I'm glad that February got robbed of three days rather than a summer month. <laughs> so he'd rather have three more days of sunshine than not. But February will pass rather quickly, and it's... And for us, it's, it's, it's a very good time because um, Lent will be coming, the great season in our preparation for the Easter celebrations. Tomorrow will be Candlemas Day. Uh, Friday will be the blessing of St. Blaise, Frost, and um, if you're at Mass on Friday, you'll have Frost blessed if you wish. And then on the weekend, we'll bless all the, the throats of everybody so that everybody can be hopefully be healthy. And I um, told Gerard this. I said I was um, an assistant pastor in Williamsport for seven years. And we had um, a school there, grade school. And uh, we'd go over there and with our candles, the pastor and I, and we'd give the little ones their, our, our blessing with the same place, you know. The little boy's standing there, and I give him the blessing and everything like that. And he goes, <coughs> nope. It didn't work. <laughs> he was expecting this cold to just disappear, you know, and this, this sore throat and everything. I said, well, it, it takes time. No, it takes time. <laughs> In the first reading today, a letter to the Hebrews for many, many years had been attributed to St. Paul. But as of late, many scripture scholars and theologians have ascertained that Paul could not have written the letter to the Hebrews, that it was written by someone else because it came later. Things are mentioned, particularly in the, in the development of liturgy and so forth, that's mentioned in the letter to the Hebrews um, that Paul would be, not have been aware of at that point. He would have been martyred previous to some of the information that provided for in, in there. But anyhow, it's a wonderful, wonderful text. And it's a wonderful God-inspired uh, word of God. Uh, and uh, we hear such beautiful things like strive for peace with everyone and for that holiness without which no one will see God. Wow. That's pretty much hitting the, the, ha the nail on, with, on the head with the hammer saying, let's straighten up and fly right as followers and disciples of the Lord Jesus. Maybe at this point, when this was being written, the followers might have been stepping backwards rather than professing their faith openly and publicly and courageously and so forth. And the author of, of uh, uh, Hebrews is saying, you know, stand up and fly right. Strive for peace and holiness of life. Well, 
I'm sure that most of the people in the town of Nazareth were probably peaceful people and they were striving for holiness too, but here today in the gospel reading, they missed the mark. When Jesus went back to his homeland, to his his hometown, uh, he found that instead of being welcomed and honored as a prophet, the people there doubted who his ability was and what his ability was and what to do. They heard stories about him doing great things every place else, and they kind of said, you know, he's just one of us. Now, who does he think he is? You know, his mother's here, his, his cousins are here, his family's here, and so on. We know him very well. He's a carpenter. And Jesus, they distrusted him. They, they wouldn't put their trust in him. And, and as Jesus said, he could not perform any great miracles there because of their lack of faith. Their lack of faith. But he did heal some of the people who were sick and so forth, as he, of course, would certainly do. He would not turn anybody away. Well, I hope God will never say that to we, parishioners of Mary Mother of God Parish in the community of North Scranton, if Jesus were to make a visit here in the flesh, would he find a doubtful congregation? Would he find people of great peace and holiness? Would he find people, parishioners, disciples, who are enthusiastic about their faith and their religion and the the goal of eternal life, won for us by Jesus on the wood of the cross? I hope he would. I'm sure for the vast majority of us, he would. I was coming down on the elevator today down in Mulberry Tower. And this man jumped on. I don't know him. I'd never seen him before. Apparently, he's a is it a visitor or a or a resident there. And he said, "Oh, is that a preacher in the back there?" And I had my collar on. I said, oh, "Yes, yeah, I'm a preacher." I said, "You want to hear a sermon?" And he just yelled out, "No." I said, well, we want to take a rain check? Never. (laughs) He didn't want to hear anything about God. He didn't want to hear anything about preaching. He he just walked, got off the elevator and just walked away, not even said goodbye or sorry or whatever. But, you know, there are people like that, unfortunately. They distrust the Lord. They distrust people of faith. We may encounter them here and there, not only in elevators, but everywhere else, probably. But they're few and far between. Because don't you you discover your relationship with the Lord Jesus? It's a permanent relationship. You can't just walk away from it. His grace is so strong. His blessing is so bounded to us. And his life is so shared with us in word and in Eucharist and all the sacraments that uh, we are happy to hear what he has to say. We're happy to see the miracles he performs. Here's a miracle every day. A piece of bread and a cup of wine becomes his flesh and his blood. Every day a miracle is performed in this church. And none of us would doubt that. That's why we come to receive him, because we believe in him. We believe his words. He is not only the prophet, but the son of God. Sacrifice his life so that you and I may have life eternal. I invite you to stand now and together let us offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord, knowing that he hears and does answer all of our prayers. That the church's leaders will serve its members with humility and love before all else. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 
hear our prayer. That those with worldly power will work on behalf of those who are left out of sharing that power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Billy Carson, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be at peace with God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not believe, that their hearts may be opened by those of us who have faith in Christ Jesus, the Savior of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as she continues to help us to know her Son better and better each day. Hail Mary, full of grace, of grace. the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst, amongst women. women. And blessed, blessed is the, is the fruit, fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of Mother God, God, pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humbled and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Let us stand and pray with peace and holiness in our hearts that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Praise the glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just a duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate with love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unavering hope. And so, with all of the angels and saints, we too sing without, sing without end uh, your glory as we all acclaim holy. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Your indeed, holy O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered building into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks handed it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church throughout, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and with all of the blessed apostles, martyrs, and saints that please you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Because there is no lack of faith here, let us pray as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress and unfaithfulness as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, and my peace I give you, not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever peace of the Lord be with you always. With holiness in our hearts, let us share Christ's peace with one another. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we this morning who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love, O Lord. Let me never be put to shame, for I call on you. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and holiness. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day today.